Hello, and welcome. My name is Josh, also known as CP Geek, and uh, today I'm going to be unboxing an item that uh, I've been pretty excited about for the uh, past, oh, let's see, this was uh, July. Um, so four months I've been waiting for this. Um, it's been backordered, it's been worked on, they've uh, changed up lenses, and uh, this is my unboxing and first impressions of the HP Reverb G2 VR headset. And uh, I'm going to be uh, cracking into that in uh, just a couple of seconds. Uh, first off, um, as this is live, I'm going to go ahead and kill a couple of background applications that I missed. Thought I caught them all. Guess not. Um, either way, we're uh, good to go now. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, fire up the 8 plus B. So uh, there's my side desk here. Um, my place is a little messy currently. I'm uh, working on that. So um, please uh, bear with me on that aspect. But uh, as you see, um, we have a box that uh, basically says uh, HP Reverb Virtual Reality right on there. Let's go ahead and zoom into that a little more. It's the box I care about, not my mug. But uh, there I am too. So uh, there's the box, and, uh, pretty uh, nondescript black box, not a big deal. Let's go ahead and uh, slice into this as I've been waiting for months on end. So this is HP's latest and greatest virtual reality headset. Um, it's one of the highest resolution headsets on the market right now. So per the spec sheet, this is I believe 2160 by 2160 per eye. And uh, that bag is only there to uh, cover up the address letter. I uh, was the most convenient thing handy to, uh, to cover that up. Using some scissors to open the box here. And the first thing that we see is uh, this piece of paper on top with uh, one, two, three. So they want you to uh, go ahead and plug in the cable. And it uh, looks like connect up the, uh, there's a splitter thing uh, that you connect to your computer. And then finally connect the uh, power brick, I guess. That's what that looks like. I'll set this aside here. Uh, they clearly want me to see that up front. So uh, I will take a look at that. And now the magic happens. This is a really pretty box. Just looking over to make sure that you guys can see there. And, uh, does this work better a little bit? It's uh, kind of got a glossy image on the uh, top there. Let me go ahead and flip this over completely so that uh, the inner box will come out. This card's shipping box. Get that out of here. All right, bottom of the box, don't care about. Sides, don't care about. There's a barcode and an HP logo and address for HP. It's got a nice HP branding on top. Bottom here, another HP. So it looks like just a picture of the headset. What a very handsome picture that is. I like that. It's a very nondescript box, very laid back. Ooh, don't want to hit my display there. So we'll uh, start with that side up and see if there are any obvious ways into the box. Hmm. Looks like it opens from down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll go ahead and use the scissors again. Just uh, cut the little tabby looks like it should flip open from the bottom yep that's exactly right and on the top we have slide this up just a little bit ah, oh, I locked down the tripod too hard 
So on the top, we have this nice insert. Um, it's like it's a cardboard material. It's not plastic. It's the same stuff the box is made of, corrugated. Um, but it's got uh, a nice um, formed uh, texture here, which uh, looks like it, it melds right into where the, uh, the headset is in the bottom. Um, so the uh, strap here, which I can feel right through the, uh, the package, um, just goes right into that center piece and uh, everything lines up. So it looks like they're doing a really, really good job for shipping. Um, this is going to arrive to everyone in exactly the same shape as it was put in the box. So that's always good. And let's see here. Wow. First impression number one, this thing is super, super light. Um, it feels like this is a demo unit. I, I can clearly feel the, uh, the headset through the um, little bag here, um, but I am impressed at how light this is. If this is it, wow. Um, over the valve index, this feels like, like I said, a, a demonstration model or something. It, it feels like a foam version of the headset. Um, let's go ahead and flip this over. Uh, it feels like a nice bag. Um, this is definitely something that's uh, you can keep it in. Um, I probably will be in order to protect it some. Um, it's not ultra durable, but um, it's a very soft material. Um, and uh, I'm glad that they've uh, included it as uh, just a little bag. Um, it uh, pulls out rear first and then front. So just move the box aside so you can see here. Camera focus. Come on, camera focus. Let's try moving it closer and then further back. We're manually focusing. There we go. So this is the uh, the HP Reverb headset. Oh, it's upside down. So we've got a couple of cameras on the front. We've got a couple of cameras on each side. So it looks like there are four cameras in total. Um, looks like everything is tracked uh, forward and down. These are positioned down and outside. So um, looks like uh, got a nice forward facing tracking grid. Um, and the cameras on the sides should get you that, that full T pose. Um, a couple of things that I'm worried about just up front is um, all of the cameras seem to want to point down. So uh, anything that goes on above your head, um, there might be some issues there. Just back this off just a little bit. Um, so everything is in cavities that point down. Um, so I'm afraid that um, for over the head, um, like playing virtual tennis or um, grabbing stuff off your back in Sorrento or uh, maybe tossing ammo back there in Half-Life Alex for storage or, or um, that sort of thing uh, could be problematic with this particular headset. Uh, we'll definitely see. Um, inside out tracking wise, I don't see why this shouldn't be plenty of data in order to get uh, reference points and, and track very well for the headset itself. Um, I don't know about the um, controllers. Um, the controllers seem to be infrared tracked with the cameras, uh, very similar to the way that the um, uh, Samsung Odyssey Plus um, was. Uh, I did own one of those for a little while, um, and uh, I was pretty unhappy with the overall tracking. Um, this is Windows Mixed Reality, uh, which operates on a very similar setup uh, to the way that the um, way that uh, the uh, Odyssey Plus did. Um, so we'll uh, have to double check and make sure that. Uh, the uh, tracking is uh, as good as can be. Um, I don't know, um, but yeah, this feels super light. Um, setting the headset uh, aside for just a moment. Um, and it looks like my tripod is falling over. 
One moment, please. You can tell this is definitely a live stream. I'm uh, using a not so awesome tripod with a nicer camera, but uh, the legs um, locked down with a little screw in, um, screw on connectors here. So I'm trying to get those a little tighter. There we go. Live stream. <laughs> All right, so let's get this back up where it belongs. Perfect. Sorry about that. Anyhow, on to more unboxing. Um, as I was saying, setting the uh, headset aside for a few moments. Um, let's bring the box back into view. There we go. So let's uh, grab the paperwork first off. I kind of wish that uh, the put like a logo or a readme or whatever on there. I guess people will know what this is, um, but it's very easy just to uh, avoid this stuff. Um, it looks like it's the, the warranty card, support numbers, and um, I'm not even seeing what could be a manual here. All right, just gonna slide everything out all in one go. All right, so this looks like a manual. And it's uh, oddly fold out manual. All right, so it looks like there's a set of six instructions in many, many languages. And I'm not even seeing English as one of them. Um, still looking, still looking, still looking. Um, some of these I recognize. Turkey, Portuguese, Netherlands. Oh, English? Is this just... For international users, uh, that's kind of weird. Let's uh, let's go to the other side here. Maybe I just started on the wrong side and I unfolded this wrong. Yes, because the instructions are huge in English, and I'm clearly not uh, not so great at that. So here it looks like we have a very similar set of instructions to that one, two, three we got on the outside of the box. One, select start, select settings, update security, select Windows update and install any updates. I've done that already. Um, I've also started the mixed reality portal just to make sure that things were up to date before I shot this video. Um, that's the uh, B instruction for number one. Um, and uh, let's open up the mixed reality portal and follow the on-screen instructions. So I'm pretty familiar with the uh, Windows mixed reality portal uh, setup. Um, I can um, run through that real quick here in a few moments um, once I get everything put together. Um, so uh, I will show you that in a moment. Um, let's see, instruction number two. Um, it looks like they want you to go ahead and plug in the... Uh, just wondering if there was a set of actual instructions that go with that part. Uh, Oh, I see. They want you to go ahead and remove the uh, face shield and um, install the uh, the cable that it comes with. It doesn't come with the cable installed. Uh, I wish that instruction were slightly clearer, but I mean, the cable is not attached, so you can't use the thing until you plug it in anyway. Um, that part's pretty apparent, uh, at least for someone like me who's fairly experienced with, uh, with using these uh, sorts of headsets. Although most of them uh, yeah, all of them came um, pre-plugged in um, when I've unboxed other headsets. So uh, I'm not quite certain what's up with that. Um, I guess they find it safer to ship or something, so the cable doesn't get kinked, um, whatever. Uh, instruction three is to use the included clip and clip the uh, cable to the back side of the headset. Uh, it's fairly simple. Again, it usually comes pre-clipped on most headsets. I've never seen this before, but um, seems to be pretty straightforward. Uh, four, um, it 
insert the um, USB-C and DisplayPort uh, into your computer. Um, I don't have USB-C, but I have heard that it comes in the box with an adapter. We'll find that in a few minutes. The computer must support DisplayPort 1.3 or higher. Uh, my workstation is running an RTX 2080 Ti, so that shouldn't be a problem with my configuration. Um, I'm running three 4K displays currently, um, so uh, I don't expect there to be any problems with uh, finding a DisplayPort 1.3 port. I'm pretty sure they're all DisplayPort 1.4. Um, let's see here. Uh, five. Um, it looks like they um, want you to go ahead and adjust the, uh, the headset, uh, bringing down the headphones. Uh, making sure that you can hear. Um, also, it seems that um, either you can remove the headphones or, yeah, they do come attached to the headset. I was just making sure of that. Um, I don't see why you would choose to remove the headphones, but I guess that is an option. Um, and uh, plug into power. Um, so uh, there's a included power brick that plugs right into the um, the little T wire uh, for display port and uh, HDMI 1.4. Sorry about the uh, moving around and the focus. Ah, there we go. You can see that. I'm just looking over at the computer monitor to uh, see what the camera sees. Uh, get in frame here. Um, so yeah, uh, plug in uh, the uh, the little junction there. Um, and um, plug her on into power. So next, it looks like uh, they want you to camera up some. Don't know why we keep slipping down. Tighten that up just a bit. So uh, the next frame here is basically just a walk around. Um, there's an interpupillary distance slider on the bottom, so we can set the distance between our eyes, um, showing you where the microphones are on the uh, bottom of the headset on either side of the nose piece. Um, there's an activity light, a power light, um, the uh, power connector. There's five on the chart. Okay, power connector uh, and uh, OcuLink to USB type C and display port cable. Interesting. Oh, I just recalled, I do have a uh, USB type C on my machine. I have a, um, the virtual link connector on the back of my graphics card, which should be just fine for USB C um, and designed for applications like this. Although um, the HP Reverb G2 does not support uh, display port over um, USB-C, um, like Virtual Link initially wanted. Unfortunately, uh, that appears to be a failed standard, but the USB-C port still works great. All right, let's put this boring documentation away and uh, continue on with the unboxing, see what else we can see in the box here. Uh, I guess next we pull out this piece, which again is the, uh, the joining um, form for the uh, uh, headset, um, which did a great job for shipping. I, I really like this configuration. In fact, uh, you can see how the two pieces fit together pretty snug. Um, so on the bottom of this, we've got these uh, two covered things sticking out that um, look a little like, uh, well, just uh, jutting out there. Oh, separate box of goodies, but uh, definitely controllers. Again, with these little uh, little bags. So just checking out the controllers for the first time. The light's actually on my glove. Um, I have a, a little glove with just a flashlight on. It just makes it easier to, to see in small spaces. Um, so the controller feels 
really similar to the um, the Oculus controller. Um, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, you know what? Let me pause for a couple of seconds and grab one of those just for comparison. So this is the right Oculus touch controller from the uh, CV1. And um, you basically see that uh, it's quite a bit smaller, very form fitting, very ergonomic. In fact, uh, to date, the uh, CV1 touch controller uh, is uh, one of my favorite controllers of all time. Um, it's just the most ergonomic controller that uh, I've ever felt. Um, I love the uh, capacitive touch sensitivity, which I know for a fact is not present on the uh, HP controllers. Um, and uh, the size, weight, and um, overall ergonomics on these are second to none in my opinion even the um the index controller i, I like the feel of the uh, uh cv1 touch controller a little bit better they feel for, like from there from the future the um hp controller that i'm holding here on the other hand very front heavy um due to the ring um i've never really liked the ring type um vr controllers there's this little piece of plastic covering the grip button i'm gonna get rid of that it feels really bad actually um, not the controller, just this little piece of plastic. It's uh, already driving me nuts, so I'm gonna remove that. Ah, tough peel. Ugh. It really wants to stay on there. All right, feel any better with it off? Yes, much, but it's shiny plastic. It's gonna be a fingerprint magnet. Um, it's got a recessed Windows button here. So I'm not gonna hit that accidentally in Beat Saber. Um, in fact, just pressing over the general area, it's not a big deal. Uh, and the menu button right beside it. Um, they're very clicky, tactile. Um, again, I don't think I'll be pressing the menu button accidentally. Um, the uh, A and B button, very, very short throw. Although this whole thing is really rather big. Um, from, a, yeah, this, uh, this controller portion. Um, it's big to wrap my hand around. It doesn't feel nearly as ergonomic as something like this. Um, which fits very nicely just in one hand, very gently. Um, yeah, this feels oversized and uh, kind of, I don't want to say uncomfortable because I can still play with this for long periods of time, but I don't think that um, it's all that ergonomic. Um, it also feels light in the wrong places. It's probably because it doesn't have any batteries in it yet. Let me find the uh, battery bay. I'm hoping that this uh, just slides like the Oculus controllers do. Ah. Hmm. Having difficulties. There we go. It's not magnetic, it's pressure. The um, Oculus controllers have very similar area and they're on magnets which is a really cool way to, uh, to do that. That's the battery bay right in there. Um, and in order to put them back together, you just basically drop it and it slides into position. It's always in the right place. They don't come apart. Um, whereas this, it's friction fit, um, just like most battery bays. Um, and it uh, looks like it takes two double A's versus the one double A of the uh, Oculus controller. So this is uh, a single double A. Um, this also uses infrared, but it's uh, external camera tracked versus the internal camera on the um, HP Reverb G2. So while I have this thing open, um, I do not believe that it includes batteries. I might uh, put my foot in my mouth now, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and reach over and uh, grab for my rechargeable batteries because I'm going to be using these anyway. Um, I've heard that these like 
be um, 1.5 volt batteries um, specifically, but these are, I believe, 1.2 volt double A's. They're still within spec, but they might not last quite as long. Um, I do accept that, um, but I don't mind. Uh, these are actually older rechargeable batteries, so uh, I'm not going to be super sad if it doesn't get me like the maximum battery life. Uh, I know that it's not recommended um, that you use uh, 1.2 volt uh, rechargeable batteries. It's not going to do any damage whatsoever. Um, the worst that'll happen is that um, the uh, batteries won't last as long. Um, the uh, regulator here will sense that uh, the voltage is dropping below uh, what it needs in order to uh, to keep functioning and uh, turn off. So I'm just going to hit a button and uh, looks like all the lights light up. If I hold it down, hmm, it may be that I haven't run my battery charger in too long and these batteries power down. Just holding the button down to see if I can get a lot of these. Okay. Well, that's clearly my bad. And uh, again, live stream. Things are bound to not go right, and that's cool. You're uh, joining me right there along with me. Pop those out and get another set. Um, let's see, I do have a bag for pre charge ones that are not in the charger. See uh, if the batteries are in the charger and the charger isn't plugged in, it works as a battery decharger somehow. Um, so I'm just looking through my batteries for a match set. Ba -ba 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 -ba. One moment. All right, I'll use this. And I know I'm going to need another set for the other controller, but I just want to see this up and running here. I know that the uh, batteries that are in this particular bag are fully charged. So we should be good to go. There we go. That's the lights that we wanted to see. All right, so that one's up and running. Glad I at least know when they're dead. The lights themselves will turn off. Um, there does appear to be this layer of diffusion um, on top of the lights themselves. I think that would be kind of inefficient, um, both for cracking, because they look kind of fuzzy. Um, that's not the camera. That's actually the way that they, actually, partially the camera. Come on, focus, focus. Oh, uh, this G85 is not focusing. There we go. So you can see uh, the text on the buttons are crispy. It's perfectly focused, um, but the uh, lights are still kind of fuzzy. That's actually the diffusion layer. Um, I think that would make it more difficult to track using the cameras. We'll see. Oh, another peel on the trigger. The uh, plastic that's on this is particularly difficult to remove. I kind of wish that they would give you a little bit more plastic on the surrounding portions. Um, get right up close and personal with that. So as you can see, there's a piece of plastic right on the trigger here. And uh, it's being a pain in the butt to remove. All right, so with the peels done and the batteries installed, the weight distribution is quite a bit better. Um, it's more here um, as far as the uh, the weight distribution, which is toward the middle. Um, I can use my forefinger here to balance it right on the, uh, the little apex here. Um, it's not that bad. Um, so the ring doesn't feel super heavy with the batteries installed. 
That's what I was afraid of. It feels like the base is super light without batteries, but they uh, apparently um, worked that into their design as far as the weight distribution, which I do appreciate. Um, I still find this configuration rather big. Um, reaching my thumb up to hit the B button is a little difficult without actually moving my grip. Um, that's about as far, far away as uh, I would uh, need it to be in order to press it with the very tip of my thumb here. Um, unless I move my hand up, which moves my uh, forefinger away from the grip button. So if I were to do that, it, it becomes unnatural. Um, this part of my finger will go up here and off the grip button, and then I can finally rest the uh, flat of my thumb on the um, button itself. Um, this whole thing is oversized by maybe 5%, um, giving a feel for the, uh, the joystick. Um, the return to center spring is very, very stiff. Um, it's still very easy to push the stick around. Um, it, it does work quite well. Um, there is a center push, so it does work that way. Um, whereas the Oculus has center push here as well, um, just like uh, standard um, Xbox controllers and whatnot. Um, I have seen thumbsticks that don't do that. For example, um, the PlayStation Vita has thumbsticks uh, that uh, do not press in, um, and uh, that's one less button that they have. It's uh, kind of weird in those kind of games, uh, first-person shooters and whatnot, um, using the Vita sticks um, without being able to press them. Uh, triggers feel good. They feel, it requires very slightly more pressure in order to push them, um, but I don't see any problem with that. Um, there is not a clip. So the um, index controllers, um, when you pull the trigger gently, um, it will come to a natural resting space, but you can pull it more and it click. Um, this does not have a click. Uh, the Oculus controllers also do not have a click. In fact, I don't believe that I've seen the click implemented in anything, um, but it is a strange oddity of the uh, index controller. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, there's that. I'm actually going to uh, grab one of the uh, index controllers just to, uh, to show you what the heck I'm talking about. So one of them down. So this is the index controller and its trigger. Um, you can press it down all the way, but if you push down more, it clicks. I'm gonna move it toward the microphone. You can hear the uh, click at the end. Um, so yeah, uh, push it down and then push down more, it clicks. Um, it's a little strange, but uh, that's the way the index controller is. Um, you can see uh, the index controller is also a fingerprint magnet. Um, I did a whole video of as far as my first impressions on the index controller, and uh, I will likely have an index review at some point soon. Um, I know I've promised that a couple of times now, uh, so I will have some additional thoughts on that. I do have uh, more index thoughts, so uh, future video. Um, so I'll go ahead and set that aside. Looks like somebody messaged me who may or may not know I'm streaming. One moment. Mid stream, see my last post. <laughs> Some people uh, haven't seen my uh, post about this stream, but uh, here we are. I apologize. Continuing forward. Um, well, that's interesting. So the light's dimmed, but when I picked it up, 
lights turned on, which means that they are tied to the accelerometer, which is cool. It saves power by dimming the lights or turning them off. Um, that's a cool feature that I just discovered and didn't uh, hear anybody else talking about. So there's that. Um, I don't see an obvious way of switching them off. Um, perhaps the Windows button, if held long enough, will power them off. That's how I powered them up. Uh, yes. Um, so I got the uh, vibration motor uh, vibrated twice and powered off. The uh, feel of that was not great. Um, I felt it once powered on and twice to power it off. So the vibration motor is very high frequency and not very strong. Um, I'm going to try that um, a little later in uh, stuff like Beat Saber and whatnot, but um, uh, I'm not impressed by the vibration motor in this yet. Uh, it feels kind of similar to the one that they put in the uh, Samsung Odyssey Plus that I had. Um, wasn't a fan of those controllers either. Uh, I like the new design of this versus the other Windows Mixed Reality controllers that I have seen. Um, but uh, as far as the, the overall design, um, better than the, um, the uh, at least the Odyssey Plus controller that I've seen. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set this controller aside take the uh, packing off of this one and uh, go ahead and slap some batteries in that, make sure it works, at least as far as getting to the lights. Come on. Opening the battery compartment is not easy because it's friction fit. I'm also afraid that it's, um, the little um, clips that hold this end are possible that I'm whoop, end up breaking them. Um, they appear to be a little on the fragile side, so much so that I don't know about if I'll be able to do 3D print replacements, which is my usual plan for things like that. Um, yeah, so I'm not impressed with how the um, clips on the battery bay are designed. Uh, that is one potential avenue for failure with this. Um, I don't expect it to fail anytime soon. Um, I have no reason to believe that um, it would be, you know, anything but uh, decent up front. Um, but uh, the clips are a little on the small side, and uh, I don't know how I feel overall with, uh, with these being friction fit like that. Um, the uh, Oculus uh, controller is pretty cool in that um, batteries will never die. Uh, sorry, magnets. <laughs> magnets will never die. Um, so that uh, I'm not worried about uh, breaking at all. Um, and uh, of course, the um, uh, index controllers are rechargeable batteries that are non-removable, at least not easily. Um, so there's no maintenance involved with that. Uh, once again, let's go ahead and remove these uh, really bad feeling peel. That is really difficult to get off for some strange reason. I don't know why they even leave those on there. Honestly, if they remove them at the factory, it's not going to get that dingy in, in shipment. Um, it's not that protective. You're not going to scratch that area very easily. Um, once again, I'll go ahead and power this up. Assuming it powers up, oh, wrong button. There's the Windows button. And either of these batteries are flat, which is strange because they came from my known good charged battery uh, bag here or I might have inserted them incorrectly somehow. Don't see how that's possible either, but uh, I'm gonna try just another set. One moment. All right, so this matches this. There we 
we go. Powered right up. I'll go ahead and throw all of those batteries that I just tried in the charger when we're done here. If they're full, we'll charge to capacity. If they're empty, well, we'll charge to capacity. Um, so this is the uh, left one and right one. Just power that up, put them in my hands, give them a feel. They're not bad. They're a little on the slippery side. Um, I'm afraid of flailing these around. You can hear that noise. That's them slipping around in my hands. Um, a little slippery. So uh, they do come with the, uh, the wristbands, which um, I'll uh, end up using. Um, they come in handy on the uh, CV1 touch controllers as well. Um, although because of the ergonomic design and the way that the ring is shaped downward, uh, it hugs your hand. So if you do let it go, it kind of hangs onto your hand. I like that a lot. Um, whereas these, whereas if you let go, you do end up with a handful of controller, but it's not a natural grip um, like it is here. So here you let go and your hand is in the ring but you're still on all the controls and your hand goes exactly back to where it belongs. I swear, these things are like designed from the future. They are amazing. Every curve on them is, is form fitting. Um, every video that I've done, uh, as far as VR goes, these are by far the most ergonomic uh, controllers that I've ever used, um, the uh, CV1 touch controllers. These are very clearly designed to emulate that. Um, or at least the um, newer versions of the um, uh, Oculus Touch controllers. And I just realized that I lost video on the other camera. That's kind of lame. One moment. Hmm. And no battery power remains. No. All right. So I'm just going to do a quick battery hot swap here. Sorry about that. Grab that. You have a whole other battery solution that I could be using that's better, and I will do a video about that. Actually, I believe that I have done a video about that, the, uh, the Ray Zesp. Always hard to say, which is why I know that uh, there's a video about that. Uh, battery uh, cheater. It's an AC adapter for these types of cameras. Bring that back online. And super messy, but let's look over here. Um, <laughs> it's my 3D printer slash maker space slash current junk pile. Um, I have some cleaning to do very shortly. So, um, we go back to our regularly scheduled program. Looks like we still got a couple of people here. More than welcome to say hello in the chat. I'll, uh, I'll return your hello. Um, All right, so we've got the controllers, we've got the packaging, we've got the manuals, we've got the cool little bags to store them in, which I honestly will probably end up using because uh, dust is a thing. And we've got care package. So what is in care package and how do I get to you? Ah, okay, so this part opens. I don't know why they decided to do it this way, but okay. Uh, seems to be pretty messy in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this out into the new box and take it out piece by piece. So we'll set that box aside, put that box, the uh, box this stuff up back together when I'm done here. So it looks like we've got a bunch of cables. First off, HP 45 watt power adapter. This looks like uh, it would be like for a Chromebook or something, but clearly it's uh, designed to power the Reverb G2. Um, 
so 45 watts and I can't read the fine print to tell you what the uh, voltage and amperage is. Uh, my guess is it's going to be a 5 volt situation as I believe this was originally designed to power over USB, um, but uh, this does not power over USB, just to be very clear, does not power over USB. Um, and uh, that situation came up because um, they were having persistence problems apparently with the uh, displays and uh, they were able to get that persist persistence issue resolved by putting a little bit more power into the displays, which drove up the power cost and thus um, we have a power brick. So power brick, oh, it's good. We have standard three prong slash clover leaf slash I don't know what the IEC um, code is for this um, but it's pretty typically found uh, in um, uh, laptops and whatnot um, it's not all that uncommon I have a small drawer full of them um, in case that uh, needs either lengthening or uh, replacement at some point down the line not a big deal very good to use common um, cable types on those big fan uh, this is a mini display port to display port adapter. Uh, I don't have any devices personally that use mini display ports. I know that some graphics cards do, so I'm thankful that they included it in the box. Uh, I suppose this could also be useful for laptop users um, who have a mini display port on the side of their computers um, and uh, a decent graphics card, or at least decent enough to run virtual reality uh, here. Um, I suspect that something like this high resolution setup uh, will require a hefty graphics card. Although um, I have also heard that uh, there is a half resolution mode with this particular headset um, that operates at, um, I guess it would be uh, 1920 by 1920, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's half. 2160, I believe. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not mathing right now. Brain not good. Um, hopefully that checks out. If not, uh, let me know. Um, anyhow, um, so yeah, there's a half resolution uh, option uh, that uh, will allow you to uh, use this on uh, lower powered graphics hardware. Um, I believe that the requirements on this are actually quite low. Um, I want to say uh something like amd polaris cards like the um uh, rx 470 480 um 490 the um rx 570 580 590 they're, they're all basically the same polaris chip with different power and um, frequency ratings uh, i believe that that's the the base of where this is it's a relatively low powered card you can find on ebay for a few hundred dollars um not all that expensive, uh, and especially not compared to the, the, the 2080 Ti that I have in my machine. Um, there's a small box. Hmm. It's kind of heavy-ish. Not sure what this is. Ah, well, that's nice. They include alkaline batteries. Uh, first set of batteries is on them. Um, LR6, 1.5 volts, KTS. Pretty generic, no idea how long these particular batteries will last. My best guess is probably not very long as mixed reality controllers don't last all that long. Um, I'm not gonna bother with these unless I have a huge problem with the rechargeable batteries that I have. And I haven't had any problems with those rechargeable batteries. Um, so I really don't think it's gonna be an issue. I'm gonna set these aside. Um, and let's see, what if you, little shiny package, can't see through you because of the tape, you are a ah, USB-A to USB-C. Um, so for people who do not have a USB-C connection on their computer, uh, you can use this adapter. Um, Again, great for laptops, great for pretty much anybody who doesn't have USB-C on their machine, which uh, is common for older cases or um, 
older motherboards that just plain don't have USB-C. Uh, I would be among them if my graphics card didn't have USB-C. Uh, and I'm running a um, AMD X470 uh, chipset with um, a 3700X, um, which is you know a modern processor. Uh, the replacements just started uh, coming out, uh, but not shipping because everything is not shipping right now. Uh, and that would be the uh, AMD 5000 series, which I'm trying to get my hands on, but nobody has them. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. USB-C, not on everything, but on most things now. They uh, are super nice by giving you that adapter though. That's uh, at least, you know, five bucks that I don't have to spend uh, if I needed it. So last thing in the box is this cable. So um, the cable is relatively thin. Uh, it's very rubberized. Um, the rubber feels kind of low quality, honestly. It feels like it's it's going to rub on lots of things. There's very high friction. Um, just rubbing on my, my arm here very gently. It takes the whole sleeve of my shirt with it, um, which means that this is probably going to catch on stuff. Um, at least that's my first impression. Uh, I haven't used it live. Um, and I will certainly let you know when that happens. Um, but I expect that um, this is, is going to catch on a lot of things. Uh, most cables that I've seen have a uh, shiny, um, no texture, smooth exterior. Um, this is tacky um, to the feel. Uh, it feels like a rubber band, uh, the, the way that is. Uh, and rubber, good for cables, good for uh, covering over cables, non-conductive, um, that's fine, but uh, the materials on the outside are actually going to matter for a VR headset, and I don't think that that's an awesome solution. Um, so that's the part that plugs into the headset, and um, is also going to catch hair and whatnot um, if, uh, if you do end up uh, rubbing your hair on the cable. Um, looks like it goes down most of the way. Uh, this part of the cable, the part that connects to the USB, um, actually feels a little less tacky than, uh, than the other part. Um, looks like it's a separate cable that runs out of here. So this is the headset cable, feels tacky. This is the part that connects to the computer, the USB and uh, display port leads uh, feels significantly less so. I wish that were the other way around, but it's not. And that leads me to the um, connection box. Um, looks like a, a nice minimalist. It's got a little uh, the uh, modern HP logo, which is pretty nice. Um, looks like there's uh, some plastic here, which does need removing. I wouldn't be surprised if this heats up as this is where the, uh, the power goes in. Um, so there may be uh, some sort of uh, electronics here um, that wraps signals or, or whatnot. Uh, I'm not sure for certain, but uh, that's the way it works on the uh, valve index and whatnot. I'm just trying to uh, get the uh, plastic off of this. It's like it peels off, but the adhesive is very strong. Extremely strong adhesive. None of the peels on these have been super easy. Um, not a big fan of that, but there's that. I'm just going to go ahead and rip through this. Um, I'm not planning on reusing this plastic, so I'll just plain take it off. Um, power goes in here. Looks like there's model information. Everything is uh, well documented. Uh, it is a sticker though, so this may end up coming off. Um, I'll uh, put this up to the camera and give a little focus. So that's where we're at. Not a whole lot to see, but there's that. 
Um, on either side, the uh, cable does not unplug from the control box. Um, I like to see an interface, although that's more to mess up. I understand why they did it. Um, it's more to mess up and it's more expensive to have an interface connection rather than hardwired setup. Um, I do like to see that they thought ahead and added strain relief to both sides of this. So bending it is not going to bend your cables. Um, they designed this very intelligently for what it is. Um, I don't know about the box. Stepping on this might be problematic. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend stepping on any expensive gear, but um, in this particular instance specifically, uh, stepping on this box um, would probably be problematic. I can feel it's a little flimsy at the center. I wish it were a little bit better reinforced. So I'm just going to unfurl this cable here. See how long we have to deal with. I think it says in the spec sheet, but a more visual person. I think it's right around the length of the um, yeah, right around the length of the uh, the CB1 and valve index. Index is a little longer, I think, but they give you plenty of cable. I don't think that uh, that this is going to be problematic. More to getting it tangled on my uh, camera cable. And I done unplugged the camera cable. One moment, please. That's live again. Yep. Sorry about that. All right. So now let's go ahead and put this together. Let's go ahead and clear the box off the table for now. I'm going to save this nice box and uh, keep all the various components that I'm not currently using in it. There's nothing. Oh, don't need this adapter or the USB-C cable for now, so I'm gonna put those in there. I also don't need the batteries, so I'm gonna keep that in there too. This up. Um, I'll keep the bags out, because I'm planning on using those for storage. And we'll go ahead and set this really nice box aside. And go after the headset. All right. So the HP Reverb U2, are there any peels on the cameras? No. Again, this is wicked light. There are no peels on the cameras, but there are peels on the lenses. Um, one of the things that's cool about this is that it can do this, full 90 degree rotation which means that you can hold it up to your face and not put the uh, headset on completely, um, which is super useful for developers, I would imagine. Um, also super useful for uh, just getting a game started and then uh, doing configuration on the PC side of things. Um, that comes up from time to time in games like Elite Dangerous where there's a billion configurations, controls. Uh, and you want to go ahead and use your keyboard and mouse in order to figure that stuff out before you go into VR. So I do appreciate that. Um, lenses on this are pretty big. I'm just going to reach over and grab another headset. Um, here's the CV-1, um, which I was playing with not long ago. And it appears the lenses are about similar size. Um, Put them uh, on the same plane so you can sort of see that. Lens is about the same size-ish. Um, the blue is just the um, the peel on those. I'll uh, peel those off in just a few moments. 
I'm going to leave them on until I get the cable firmly attached. Um, the index. Huh? In my back? Is the camera working? Yes. Okay. Um, I yanked on some display cables and the displays decided that uh, they were going to reset themselves. So let me uh, just reach over for a couple of seconds here. Just trying to pull my index screen. Okay, everything is back. All right. And now we're flashing blue on my primary display, but things appear to still be working properly as far as the recording. Um, for now, I'm just going to uh, leave that be. Um, if you see me flashing blue, that's just the display in front of me. Uh, nothing seems to be going completely to plan tonight. Nothing catastrophic, but, uh, oh, okay. I've located the remote from my center display. I'm just going to go ahead and power that off for now. I'll uh, move the chat to another window. Power that off. I don't know why that happens from time to time. The display will just start blinking blue. Uh, anyhow, as I was saying before, I was uh, really interrupted by technical difficulties. Uh, this is the index. On this, significantly larger, I believe, uh, a little bit. Probably, I want to say maybe 30% larger ish um, compared to the reverb and the uh, CV1. Um, that will probably relate directly to the um, field of view on this particular headset. Uh, the field of view is expected to be significantly lower. I have a loose cable, which I will identify and check out um, when the stream is over. Um, hopefully that uh, won't cause me a huge issue when I go to um, try out the headset uh, in a few moments. Anyhow, um, back to the, uh, the headset itself. So let's go ahead and remove the facial interface. Uh, which is held by uh, four, one, two, three, four, very strong magnets. And looks like really good nose flaps to keep the uh, the light out. Um, let's see here, turning around for just a moment. Um, Let's uh, flip the camera around for a couple of seconds. This is the uh, facial interface that I just removed uh, from the uh, this HP Rift. No, HP Rift, listen to me. <laughs> it's getting kind of late. Um, this is the uh, HP Reverb G2 going crazy here. So um, just to try the facial interface with, uh, with glasses and see how it works with the nose piece. Um, some minimal difficulties going on around my glasses, but it looks like it'll fit. It's kind of snug. Um, I look like a complete idiot doing this, but you can very easily see uh, where my glasses go with that. So I will probably be utilizing glasses in VR. Um, I'm uh, a little farsighted, uh, so I don't necessarily need glasses in VR, but I feel like they, uh, they help me out a little bit um, on the index. And uh, I think that I can use VR like this for long periods of time. I, I don't see why not. Um, looking downward, I know that uh, I'm probably looking very cross-eyed. I'm judging light leak um, beneath. And uh, this nose piece does a really good job at comfortably blocking out a lot of outside light, which is great to see. So I'm very happy about that. Switching back to the uh, headset here. Now that we have the facial interface off, let's go ahead and plug in our cable. Um, once again, I'm going to sort of unfurl the cable here 
find the end and make sure it's not kinked. All right. Cable every which way. All right, I'm gonna set the computer end of the cable near my computer, which is on the floor on this side here. And uh, this is the interface for the headset. So I guess I'm just gonna cram it in like this. It looks like it wants to wrap around this way. So the hole for the uh, interface is actually quite good. Very snug. There's no way to plug this in wrong. Um, pushing down gently. See if it engages. It does not. Okay, there's a click. That's uh, definitely engaged. And uh, I like the lines. It wraps around the, uh, the headset and uh, the facial interface fairly well. There's a clip on the back side here. So I'm just going to go ahead and route that around the inside of the headset. And I've heard a lot of people have broken this clip. So I'm going to try to be very gentle with its operation. I'm not quite certain how to actuate that clip. Let me consult the manual real quick. I know RTFM on my stream, right? Um, but I don't want to break my brand new VR headsets clip. So Okay, it looks like that clip slides somehow. So slides up or down. Oh, okay. Oh, all right, it's just a little clippy. Cool. So I went ahead and removed it. Now I can put the cable in place like so. And then I will replace it just by putting one side in there and pushing and it clipped. And it's appropriately clipped onto the back of the unit. Nice and easy. I don't see any problems there. Okay. Now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and peel these lenses. Get the blue off of them and replace the facial interface like so. Making sure that that cable routes properly around. Oh, that's that's all it goes in. So Oh, it's not upside down. So why isn't this going in? Not enough cable, maybe? One side's in good, but the other one is not. Just trying to get a little bit more slack on that cable. Okay, positive lock. I think it would just wasn't uh, getting enough slack on the on the cable as it was coming out. Um, that's a very good fit now. All right. So that part is set. There's an IPD adjustment at the bottom of the headset. My IPD is around the middle. Oh, it's uh, not clicky at all. Um, it's uh, a very nice slider, uh, very smooth operation. Um, I'll set that about the middle because that's about where my eyes lie. I will go ahead and flip down the uh, index-like headphones. They look identical to the uh, the index as far as the uh, the way that those look. Just to do a side-by-side -side comparison, this is the index, 
and this is the uh, Reverb G2. Um, it looks like the uh, screen material is a little different uh, between them. Um, the index has slightly smaller holes on the outside um, versus the uh, the cone on the, um, the HP Reverb G2. I don't think that they are the same speaker. It looks like the Reverb G2 has a slightly larger um, cone di um, diameter um, versus the uh, the Reverb. I'm not positive on that, but uh, see here the inside cone if i can get a good look at this cone. Um, but again i don't think that they're part for part the same um they don't necessarily need to be they just need to sound good but uh that is different from what i understood i thought that they were the same physical components on the inside uh they may just be using well, if they were using a different enclosure, they would be the same exact size. Could just be my eyes. I'm not positive on this. Um, this is all just from my initial look. Um, so uh, please uh, take that with a grain of salt uh, moving forward. Uh, I can see very clearly on the inside um, that there is a sensor for uh, whether or not it's on your face. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the main camera again and try to put this on my face. Now, this is always pretty silly, but uh, you know, I have absolutely zero embarrassment. Um, I'm just undoing all of the uh, Velcro straps so it's nice and loose. Get a little wider and uh, go ahead and slide it on my head, see what's comfortable. Leaving my glasses on for now. Flip that up so I can get that in. Slide my glasses in the bottom here. And then slide the back over my head. I can feel the uh, va uh, Velcro straps going through their various holes. Just trying to get a fit for where this goes. Again, I have a little bit of a larger head, I guess. So, just uh, getting the, figuring out the light leak situation and getting my glasses situated. Hopefully, not touching the lenses with them, getting the uh, headphones situated around my ears. And now that uh, the headset is on and reasonably comfortable, I'm going to go ahead and cinch these down where they fit. And then the middle here. Put this where it goes, as snug as it'll be. Just getting the initial fit right. All right, that's that's pretty decent. I still have no idea how I look because I have not reviewed the video, but uh, hopefully somebody will let me know uh, how uh, how this looks on uh, a real person. Um, I see nothing but black in here right now. This isn't plugged into anything, so uh, it always feels kind of dopey. Um, but this also gives me an opportunity to check for light leak. There is a little bit around the uh, the bridge of my nose right in this section. It's not bad at all. Um, I, I have certainly seen worse, and manipulating the uh, VR headset on my face, I can uh, get rid of a lot of that light leak, which will be important for darker games like Elite Dangerous when I, when I do that. Um, first impressions of the facial interface is uh, it's quite comfortable. 
Um, it's a little warm, even with the uh, the headset not uh, active. Just my body heat uh, makes it a little warm. Squeezing the glasses in here, um, I do feel them sort of pressed to my face. Uh, that's pretty normal for, for using glasses um, in the, the headset. Let me try them with and without, see how I feel about it. Uh, see if my uh, visual acuity uh, works well. Uh, as I'm uh, farsighted, uh, seeing things close up uh, can be somewhat difficult for me. Um, and the lenses are as close up as any plane in my visual existence will be. Um, so uh, it might be a good idea for me to do that. I've done VR without glasses before, though, and uh, I've had a good time there, too. So um, we'll see what uh, what happens here when, uh, when things get turned on. All right, so now that I've got things set the way I need them, um, there's a little bit of wiggle room. It uh, enables me to pop this off pretty easily. Do I have a VR face? Uh, I don't see that I have a VR face, but I've only had this on my face for a few minutes, maybe a minute and a half. Um, feels comfortable. comfortable, if I can speak the English language. Um, yeah, so I don't see any reason why I can't use this for hours on that. Um, one thing that I did notice, however, switching over to the uh, the other camera on the desk, um, when I put it on and, and tried to adjust, um, you'll note that um, if I make this level, um, it is not at all level. Um, and that's because on one side I have a whole lot of strap, and on the other side I have not so much strap. So um, there was a, an issue, I guess, with the way that uh, it aligned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and undo one side of this. Um, hold back on it a little bit, just line it up a little bit better, and then lock it down to about the same length as the other one, and then give it another go to see if it's tight enough still. So. Fitting it in around my glasses, back of my head. That is actually more comfortable. Um, I feel that things are more aligned, clearly. Um, back of my head is more comfortable because of that alignment. Um, but also the, um, the suction of my face um, is uh, far less as well. I, I let a little out. Um, light leak, still very good. Um, just uh, comfortable overall, and uh, that's a good solve. So, got to keep these symmetrical. Um, the uh, CV1 has very similar um, CV1 has very similar um, uh, ways to do that. I do like the flip up, flip down. Um, you're not going to flip it up entirely while it's on your head, um, but uh, it is a good way to uh, grab something off your desk. Um, just to be able to flip it slightly um, because of the way this pivots. So I, I do very much like that. Uh, yeah, you're not going to flip that up while it's on your head. Um, also to remove it, um, there's uh, plenty of play in, uh, in the Velcro straps. They're elastic. Um, so this can move in and out on either side, um, as well as that uh, pivot movement. So getting it on and off without... Uh, having to adjust the Velcro straps in any way. Um, if you're the only user of this VR headset, it's very good um, as far as uh, not having to readjust when you put it on and, and take it off. Um, so that's cool. All right. Um, Sorry, one moment here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the software side of things now. Um, Just getting things set here. I should have had this done ahead of time, but with my displays blinking all over the place and whatnot, uh, it's sometimes problematic. So 
So this is my desktop view with uh, yours truly, as uh, it was before down in the frame there. Um, this is the uh, just Steam uh, with uh, the Windows Mixed Reality portal that I've launched uh, with my standard overlay. Um, if uh, you are interested in uh, helping me pay down my uh, camera equipment, uh, please uh, go ahead and uh, drop me a donate. Um, you can go to my website, cbgeek.org. Uh, I do have some additional details there, or it will be at the bottom of most of my videos. It'll be at the bottom of this one once it's uh, finished uh, rendering, and I have the chance to, uh, to edit the, uh, the video here. Um, so uh, if you're interested in giving back, please uh, feel free to donate in any amount you wish. Uh, looks like uh, uh, we've got uh, quite a way to go. Anyhow, enough shilling. Um, if you want to, uh, to donate, you can. Otherwise, just uh, clicking like, getting subscribed on this video um, is uh, going to be very important to, uh, to going on. Um, if you like these sorts of discussions, like these first looks, uh, please go ahead and click the uh, the share link button um, and uh, share it to all your friends on social media. Um, certainly interested in uh, having discussions. I always read the, all the comments, um, so uh, please uh, feel free to uh, to comment on this as well. Uh, I generally reply to most comments that I receive, um, and uh, you can check me out in some some future videos. So uh, go ahead and uh, and click that uh, subscribe button. Very important. Um, moving on to the, uh, the software setup here, um, again, um, this is just Steam. So uh, I know that uh, Mixed Reality does require you, uh, sorry, the Windows Mixed Reality devices, WMR devices, uh, require you to uh, go ahead and um, link Steam with a separate application download. Uh, I've done this already, but for anyone who is interested, um, you can just go ahead and search Steam for Mixed Reality. You'll find the Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR uh, application here in Steam. It's free. Uh, it basically bridges Steam VR with the uh, Windows Mixed Reality portal. Um, so if you go ahead and click on that, uh, click the uh, either the uh, free button or the Use Now button. Um, I've installed that already. Um, so Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR. Uh, it's uh, three and a half megabytes. It's just a shim uh, that connects the Windows Mixed Reality renderer to the Steam VR renderer and makes everything play nicely with one another. Um, so highly recommended. Don't forget this step if you are a Steam VR user who wants to use Steam VR games in Mixed Reality. Um, also, I very strongly recommend if you're interested in playing any of the Oculus exclusive games, which you can do with any VR headset that's compatible with Steam, um, you can use uh, an application called uh, Revive, um, which uh, will allow you to use Oculus titles, most of them anyway. There are some caveats and provisos and uh, limitations. Um, but they're very well documented on the uh, website for uh, Revive in terms of what does and doesn't work. Most things just work with most touch controllers. It's usually um, layout mapping, um, particularly for the old Vive Wand style controllers that have problems. Uh, if you have the index controllers or you have um, most of the, the Windows Mixed Reality stuff, I, I didn't have any problems with the... Um, mapping is on the uh, uh, Samsung Odyssey Plus uh, or anything like that. Revive is just a great way to uh, play legitimate Oculus titles um, on any VR headset that you happen to have. So love that group. Keep on keeping on. Um, if they have donate links, please give them your money. Um, they work really well. Um, but using Steam, you must download the Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR client. Very, very few instructions will mention this, um, but it is imperative for actually using Steam VR games with the Mixed Reality, uh, Windows Mixed Reality portal. So, Windows Mixed Reality portal. Uh, Windows 10 has this pre installed on every new version. So, I believe it's. 
at least 1909, which is the oldest version of Windows 10 that anybody should realistically be running. If you're running an older version than 1909, then get updated to at least 1909. Um, there are major security problems with previous versions. I'm not gonna go into it too deeply. Uh, that's beyond the scope of uh, this VR video, um, but uh, get Windows updated if you're not at least at 1909. Um, to see this, um, you can go ahead and click on the start menu, go to settings, and settings popped up on my secondary screen. I'll drag that over, make it a little bigger. So within settings, go to system, See my three displays plugged in. Um, scroll to the bottom of this left pane here uh, and go about. Under about, you see device specifications. Uh, here we have the name of my machine uh, that we're running at 3700X. Uh, um, that uh, I have 64 gigs of RAM. Um, and that uh, under Windows specifications, I'm running Windows 10 Enterprise version 2004, which is the latest and greatest version of Windows. So, 2004. Um, you may not necessarily want to upgrade to Windows 2004. Uh, there had been some bugs associated with it. Um, you might want to keep on previous version. That's okay. You don't need the latest and greatest version in order to run the Windows Mixed Reality Portal. It's installed on all versions of Windows going back a pretty long way. So uh, in order to initially start the Windows Mixed Reality Portal, start, and then you type Mixed Reality. And the Windows Mixed Reality Portal will pop right up. Um, also, the Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR will pop right up as well. Uh, you don't actually need to run the application; it's just a shim. So, Steam VR works. Um, uh, it's basically a plugin for Steam VR. Um, so, it's uh, it will automatically get used when you uh, launch into Steam VR with Windows Mixed Reality. So, start up Windows Mixed Reality. Get started. Big button. Let's get set up. Uh, we'll go through some of the setup here, including a check of your computer. Then you'll put the headset on for finishing touches and also FYI, uh, some, um, only some languages are supported. Uh, as I'm English, um, as I speak English, that is I'm American, um, that this software is, uh, is all in English uh, by default. Um, and that's the version of Windows that I'm using, etc. Should be fine. For this to work, we need to install up to two gigabytes of software on your computer, and you must agree to the privacy statement in terms of service. It's pretty boilerplate Microsoft terms of service. If you agree to the Windows one to run this, you probably agree to the Windows Mixed Reality one. I'm not a lawyer, do what's best for you, but in order to proceed, you have to agree. Um, to reduce the risk of serious or fatal injury, use a space with plenty of room and no obstacles. Uh, headsets and apps may have additional safety instructions or set age limits for use. Uh, be sure anyone who uses your device follows all the safety and health guidelines. Again, boilerplates. Um, there's a learn more with health and safety. Um, if you've ever used a VR headset, you know what that is all about. If you have not used a VR headset, uh, it basically means that uh, they're not responsible for any injuries that uh, may occur because of your play in VR. You get tangled in a cable, you trip, you don't have enough room, and you bang into something. Um, make sure that your area is clear before you play and uh, go for it. Um, as you can see, I have very little room in the lab right now, uh, so I will mainly be trying out um, the uh, HP Reverb G2, got it. Um, I'll be trying out the Reverb G2 uh, in some seated applications. Uh, as I mentioned previously, I'm a fan of Elite Dangerous. That's a seated application that I use with um, a hands-on throttle and stick controller. Um, it's seated, you look all around. It is an amazing VR space simulator. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of controls to learn, etc. But it's a phenomenal game that I strongly recommend. Um, and uh, for that, uh, that's seated. 
Uh, I'm also going to be doing some Star Trek Bridge Crew. Really cool game, really fun. Um, so uh, there's that, uh, and that's also seated um, where you're at a uh, uh, computer terminal uh, on one of the uh, Star Trek starships, and uh, it's basically a bridge simulator. Um, super fun if you're uh, at all a sci-fi fan or a Star Trek fan. Highly recommended. Uh, it's a very good uh, cooperative strategy game, I would call it, because um, it's multiple people with different consoles, and you all got to work together in order to accomplish a goal. Cooperative strategy game, really fun. Star Trek Bridge Crew. Um, so yeah, seated experiences should be awesome. Uh, many standing experiences one can also play seated. Uh, I've actually had a couple of sessions of Half-Life Alex uh, completely seated uh, because you can move around with teleport or um, you know those sorts of things. Uh, you can basically jump from location to location and um, uh, it lends itself to working fairly well uh, with limited motion. Uh, it's also great for people who uh, have limited mobility. Um, if you are someone who is uh, bound to uh, a chair, a wheelchair, whatnot, uh, for the majority of your day, uh, and you want to relax with some VR entertainment, you still definitely can do that. Um, you can utilize the uh, the VR headset and environments um, with really good ease uh, for for sitting in a chair. Um, if you can uh, manage to move around a little bit of your upper body, um, at least to look around in the VR space, um, then uh, I would definitely recommend uh, VR for uh, for folks who may be uh, differently abled um, and uh, not able to get up. It's a great way to visit other spaces without actually moving out of your environment. So strongly recommended for, for those folks who uh, have difficulties getting around. Um, anyhow, tangents, um, obviously a live stream. Uh, you know, check the chat to see if uh, anybody has actually said anything. Nope, I don't have any chat here. Um, no big deal. So uh, looks like I have uh, at least a few users. Uh, if anybody uh, wants to say anything, you're more than welcome. Please do. Happy to, uh, to follow the chat while I'm streaming here. Uh, but otherwise, continuing on, I agree after ranting for like five minutes. Um, so GPU check, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. Um, it was the best uh, graphics card that you could possibly get like four months ago. Um, graphics driver. I just updated this yesterday, so I am running the latest version. Um, you should always be running the latest version of your graphics driver. Uh, as I'm running an NVIDIA card, I'm actually using GeForce Experience, uh, which is NVIDIA's automatic updater. You just run it every so often and it says, hey, there's a new driver. Do you want to download it? And it'll go ahead and get uh, that driver set up for you with a button click. So very simple that way. Uh, just make sure you're running the latest version of the graphics driver. Uh, AMD does have a, a similar automatic update function if you enable it. I definitely would recommend doing so for VR. Um, there's always new graphics drivers coming out, which can improve things pretty dramatically uh, for some newer games, especially um, or playing games that uh, need patching um, and uh, development time. So it's a good way to solve some problems by keeping the latest version of the, uh, the driver up to date. Um, 64 gigs of RAM, you don't need that much ever. Um, I have a pretty hefty workstation, so uh, I do a lot of heavy multitasking, a lot of uh, video editing and whatnot professionally. Um, so uh, I have more RAM than most. I think that the uh, minimum is probably going to be somewhere between 16 and 32 gigabytes. You can probably get away with 16 gigabytes for a good entry level VR experience. Um, I have 52 gigabytes of free disk space on my primary drive, um, which is an SSD M.2 PCIe 3 SSD. It's fast. Um, I do have most of my games on a uh, spinning hard drive, um, 7200 RPM Western Digital hard drive. Uh, it's quite a bit slower than an SSD. Uh, if I plan on playing a game a lot uh, within a short span, I sometimes will move it to the SSD to play for long periods and then move it back to the hard drive when I'm done. Uh, it's a good way to do it. 
uh, USB 3.0 plus, absolutely necessary for modern VR experiences. Um, pretty much every motherboard that's a few years old now, uh, let's see, USB 3 came out and uh, I want to say 2012 computers started getting it uh, a lot. Um, so if you have a new uh, a computer that's uh, that's newer than five years old, which you really should for VR, um, then uh, that's uh, should be just fine. You should have USB 3. Um, Bluetooth for controllers. Here it says none. I do have a USB Bluetooth controller. It's not plugged in right now, which is why it's not seeing it but I believe that this headset should also have an internal Bluetooth uh, controller. So um, I'm not too worried about that. If I need to plug in my adapter, I can do that, and I will let you guys know that in just a few minutes uh, that that's necessary, but uh, right now I don't believe it is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click Next. Welcome to Windows Mixed Reality Connector Headset. So that's something that I haven't done yet, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over and uh, try to accomplish that. So uh, the other end of this cable, um, please bear with me. This uh, may take me just a, a few moments here while I uh, rig up the uh, backside of my cable. Um, I'm actually gonna take a very short bio break um, and uh, get a few sips of water. My uh, voice is getting a little scratchy. So uh, I will be back in approximately five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the VR headset into the box, give us some power um, and uh, power it on up. Uh, and uh, as soon as uh, that happens, I'll uh, go ahead and grab a quick drink, use the restroom and uh, five minutes, I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I'm back with a big, tall, frosty glass of strawberry kiwi iced tea. And I have plugged in the Reverb G2. And the Mixed Reality Portal says getting ready to set you up. So while we're waiting for uh, that to happen, I'll go ahead and switch back as soon as it has anything else that it needs to say. Um, yeah, uh, this, uh, oop, focus. Again, live stream. Okay. No, what am I gonna do? Just uh, taking a quick look at YouTube. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will experience buffering. That's not a good thing. Um, just checking through OBS real quick while I'm here. Um, a few stats. Looks like I've had a little bit of rendering and encoding lag. I apologize if the video quality dropped while I was shooting before. I was having some um, video difficulties, which I'm hoping are now resolved. Um, the screen is no longer blinking. I, I powered it up, and that's what we were using for the desktop view. Um, it looks like frames missed due to rendering lag was 1.2%. It no longer appears to be going up as far as those frame counts. Um, so hopefully the stream is solid. Uh, people are experiencing difficulties, please do let me know. Uh, I will uh, walk back bits and pieces of the video later on, but it looks like we are sending out a smooth six megabyte stream to uh, YouTube at 1080p, um, which is exactly where we should be, uh, 1080p 30. So yeah. Um, I don't see any current video issues. Sorry about uh, any technical difficulties as we, uh, we move on. Um, so let's switch back to uh, desktop view. And uh, Mixed Reality Portal is saying choose a setup. Um, so you can either set me up for all experiences, which is the recommended, 
um, which just judging from the picture looks like it's setting up a surrounding gate. Choose this to enjoy seated standing and room scale fun. We'll create a boundary to help guide your movements when you can't see your surroundings. Um, you'll need at least a five by seven foot of clear space. Uh, my lab free space is bigger than 5.7, um, but right now it's currently occupied by a bunch of stuff. As I said previously, I really need to clean up my lab this weekend and uh, get a little bit more space, which will allow for room scale experiences just like this VR person is doing here. Uh, fortunately, I don't have that ability right now, but as I was explaining previously, um, the uh, set me up for seated and standing um, will enable me to uh, sit right where I'm at, at my desk, and uh, use VR. Um, as the desk is kind of close as it would be for most working scenarios, uh, typically for VR, I will push my chair back away from my desk. Um, both back and slightly to the left as uh, I have an L desk in front of me. Um, the camera view uh, of the unboxing situation um, was actually on the other part of my L desk, right beside my, uh, my third monitor to my right here. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I go ahead and pull my chair away from anything that I could hit, um, like desk area um, or anything that might be protruding. Uh, I do have more than enough space to do that right now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, the seated uh, and standing experience. Here it warns that you won't have a boundary, so you'll need to stay put uh, to create a boundary later. Um, you can go to the Mixed Reality Portal uh, application, which is the one that we currently have open. And there is an option to go ahead and set a boundary later on so we can do this full setup later. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the uh, the seated and standing because I really want to check this thing out tonight. Um, but I don't want to go through the hassle of cleaning up right this second. Are you sure if you choose seated and standing, you'll need to stay put while using your headset? No moving around. That's an interesting warning. Um, you can technically stand up and move around a little bit. Um, it's basically saying that they don't recommend doing so because there is increased risk of injury without the visual border inside of VR. Um, it is strongly recommended that if you are going to stand up and move more than like a foot, take like any steps whatsoever, um, then uh, you're going to want to set that boundary up. So uh, for anyone who's not done that before, um, do the boundary thing clear the space the first time you do it, make sure you're safe, make sure you don't have any obstacles. Um, also, I'm not doing it right now, but a pro tip that I have for everybody is make sure that that boundary is a little smaller than the actual space that you have. Uh, I have hit walls, I've hit 3D printers uh, with my VR controllers, with my hands, with my arms. Anything that would protrude into that three-dimensional space, you got to think vertically, make sure there's absolutely nothing between you and the virtual wall uh, that you set up. Very important. New people should always make that border a little smaller than the actual allowed space. Uh, just go around, be a little sloppy about it on the inside, um, draw that boundary close-ish to you. Um, keeping that um, five by seven inch, uh, five by seven foot space. Make sure you have a lot more than that. Uh, whole living room, if you can, uh, is is definitely good. The more space you have with the VR, uh, the better. So long as you can keep it tracked with a headset that uses inside out tracking, like the HP Reverb G2, um, you basically have a virtually infinite environment that you can have. Um, so the larger the space, the better uh, in general, so long as you have enough cable in order to uh, to keep you tethered to it. I'm hoping for a wireless future for VR on the PC, um, but uh, we haven't quite seen that. Uh, Valve says the index should have wireless at some point. I'm pretty sure that's what their, uh, their thinking was with the uh, the the frunk on the, the front of the uh, uh, index uh, is all about so you can fit a wireless receiver or a wireless transceiver yes um, 
and uh, that will be an uh, uh, excellent addition if they ever come out with a device that, uh, that actually drives it. I think that we're all curious about um, uh, non-tethered wireless VR with preferably long battery life. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, moving forward, yes, sure. Uh, next, we'll center your headset, hold it in front of you, and point it toward your computer, then select center. So, a quick sip of uh, iced tea here. Grab the headset here. Oh, that's pretty nice. Just noticed that um, the HP logo actually lights up while it's uh, in operation. That's uh, certainly interesting. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead. Get some cable here. It's already starting to snag on stuff. All right, so. Let's go ahead and aim it toward the computer. We'll go ahead and center. Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? And center. Use speech and mixed reality. Turn this on to use dictation, voice commands, and to talk to Cortana and other applications that use Microsoft cloud based speech recognition. We'll turn on speech recognition for mixed reality online speech recognition for this Windows device. When you're using your headset, We'll always be listening for voice input. We'll send everything you say to the Microsoft cloud-based speech recognition service. We'll collect information about your voice input and use it to help improve Microsoft speech services. And there's a privacy statement. While this sounds kind of cool, personally, I don't want everything that I say going to Microsoft. I switched all of that off in Windows. I'm not a big fan of that from a privacy perspective. Um, it could be kind of cool feature wise, but personally not really into it. Uh, your mileage may vary. Um, if you're okay with Microsoft collecting your voice input for purposes of speech recognition, you can go ahead and do that if you want to. I'm not going to right now. Also, I personally don't utilize any of the Windows Mixed Reality platform when I use VR. Um, Windows Mixed Reality is simply a portal for me into Steam VR. Uh, all of my games and applications launch and run through Steam VR, so I'm not going to use any of this stuff anyway. I don't want my voice going to Microsoft, just me. Um, some people are okay with it, I am not, so don't use speech couldn't install Windows Mixed Reality. Before we finish setting up Windows Mixed Reality, you'll need to restart your computer, then go to Start, Mixed Reality Portal, and we'll get you going. <laughs> Apparently, I have a pending system update, which will cause me to uh, go ahead and have to reboot my machine, which is what this stream is running on. So I'm going to go ahead and do so Please note that um, if this stream goes belly up, there will be a new stream within 10 minutes. Um, please do continue over there. I will go ahead and post about that one as well, so we can go ahead and continue. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and restart my computer, which is always super tricky when doing a live stream. So please excuse me for just a moment. I'm going to go black on YouTube for right now. Um, hopefully I'll be able to continue this stream in a couple of minutes. If I cannot continue this stream, I will go ahead and create a new one. Please follow that video there. It'll be less than 10 minutes. So please bear with me. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Um, thank you for those who, uh, are still with me here. Um, I'm, uh, so Mixed Reality uh, is uh, still downloading some updates. 
and um, I'm going to go ahead and open up Touch Portal again, get my situation going here. Touch Portal. That's the application that I use for uh, switching inputs with OBS. OBS. All right, so we're streaming. I'm going to go ahead and switch to full camera view. And launch Firefox, which always takes a few moments because I have many tabs that load on launch. Please uh, stick around. Clearly, this is not a huge professional stream, but uh, my first impressions. And just a quick look here. Sorry about that. I'm still getting my uh, computer situated after a reboot. I'm trying to find all of those. Where's the YouTube tab where I have this particular stream going here? So many windows that open on launch. It's maybe a minute. I apologize, but uh, clearly this is live. I hope we're live anyway. Or here I am talking to myself, as per usual. <laughs> Another sip of iced tea while I wait. Still updating uh, the Windows Mixed Reality portal. Still opening tabs. So many tabs. Looks like we're at 48% on the uh, Windows Mixed Reality download here. Go ahead and show that to you. Come on, YouTube live streaming studio window open. I have the right window on my uh, my other display here, one where OBS is running as well, which is how I'm doing this uh, video stream. It's like we're up to sixty percent on that download. Taking forever to down uh, to um, open up all the uh, the tabs in the background here. I wish I had some fun background music, something that would uh, either be telephone wait music or you know, something along those lines. Still working on the whole live streaming thing. So, so far I'm mostly pretty impressed uh, overall with the, uh, the headset. The build quality of the headset itself is, uh, is pretty nice. Um, it doesn't feel flimsy, the headset itself. It does feel very light, but that lightness does not indicate poor quality, if that makes sense. Um, in fact, quite the opposite. It, it indicates that a lot of engineering has gone into building this headset and making it light. Um, that's something they were clearly shooting for. So I'm um, very happy about that. Um, the, uh, Facial interface, it looks like they put a lot of time into designing that. Uh, that certainly shows. Very strong magnets are holding it to screws. You, it, it's a nice positive connection. You can tell whether it's connected or not. Um, it feels pretty good on the face. I mean, it'll probably feel better without glasses. In fact, uh, while we're waiting, yeah, switch back to the uh, the main camera and uh, just go ahead and give it a shot without the glasses. See uh, how that feels in terms of comfort while we wait here. Just go ahead and toss that on. It's a little loose without the glasses, I guess, but still 
Oh, okay. I just got to lower that back piece. Yeah, that's that's super comfortable right there. Locks out all the rest of the light. And uh, yeah, I could go many hours like this. Uh, in fact, um, hoping to uh, to try this out with some movie watching as well. Um, hoping that the uh, the resolution on this is uh, good enough for uh, for movie watching. Okay, it looks like I am still up and streaming uh, with four concurrent users. See that page is uh, is now open, although uh, it's still not refreshing. Let me go ahead and click the refresh button and see if it gets me any better information. Chat rate is still zero, and it looks like I have four people watching, which is cool. Thank you very much for, for tuning in, uh, despite all of the uh, the technical difficulties that we've been having. Um, YouTube says stream health is good. Looks like you've got a couple of likes here. Don't forget to, uh, to like, subscribe if you are not already. Uh, thank you very much. And... Um, Still curious that I don't have live chat. I'm going to turn live chat off and on again. Off and on. And uh, if people have uh, that again. And it looks like uh, Mixed Reality has completed its download process and uh, is done. And uh, it looks like, ah, people can chat now. Hello, uh, oh, glasses, glasses are definitely a good idea. Sulkin sends hi. Well, hello. Thank you for uh, for tuning in and uh, making it this far. Um, some, uh, what are we, like two hours in? Uh, I guess uh, live chat was broken for a while, but restarting it uh, seemed to work. Virtual uh, sorry, Mixed Reality Portal is now online. Um, I haven't touched anything, so uh, switch on over to that. So uh, if anybody has anything to say, please comment. Uh, I, like I said, I think live chat was broken previously. Uh, YouTube has done this to me in a couple of occasions. I don't know why it's broken, but it shows fine on my side. It just, nobody can chat. Um, anyhow, Mixed Reality Portal is online. And it looks like, yes, the headset is online. I'm gonna try it without glasses first. That is pretty darn fuzzy, but it may just be me. <laughs> <clears throat> Toss that back on and see how that works. Yeah, it, it's just me. Um, it's, it's not fuzzy at all. In fact, this is pretty amazing. All right, so it's having me stare at this little gem, uh, I guess just to see if the trackers work or not. Um, it's telling me getting things ready in VR. I think you guys can see any of this. Um, all right, so please uh, bear with me here. I'm gonna grab up the motion controllers, power them up, and uh, at least get into Steam VR so I can capture the output of what I'm seeing so uh, you're not left in the dark as far as where I'm at right now. Um, I am getting a little bit of stuttering, but I believe that it might just be due to the fact that um, I have uh, OBS running at the same time as my web browser running. Um, 
So I'm sorry that you can't see what I see right this second. Um, I'm just looking for Steam VR. I don't remember how to uh, make that work in all honesty. I think I had set this up previously. Ah, there we go. There's the second controller. Um, what is this? Oh, okay. So this is floor calibration. Just do that real quick. Just setting my controller on the floor and bringing the floor up and down to it. So when the controller starts to disappear with the floor plane, I know that uh, that's exactly where the floor is. So now it knows that uh, my floor is where it is. And I can go ahead and continue. Um, so I'm not seeing the Steam VR set up in here. I might just have to start it from outside. Okay. Yep, that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, I think I have to start Steam VR from outside. Hmm. My mouse isn't working. Oh, right. It doesn't work because the uh, virtual reality portal takes over for it. Um, hmm. I alt tab and use my mouse. Oh, okay. My mouse doesn't work until I remove the headset. That's kind of lame, but I understand where they're going with that. All right. So let's open up Steam and try to launch Steam VR. Thought that there was a quick way to do that from there, but Steam VR. And it's loading in the headset. Ah, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, capture that window. Hmm. Just trying to get this right. Oh, put on your headset to leak VR. Ah. Okay, so VR view is doing its thing.
All right, that seems to be working. Cool. Looks like I probably have to quit my web browser in order to make that happy. Let's see how it looks in VR. It doesn't appear to look at all in VR. I see black screens, just black. Shows it on the VR monitor. Let's uh, go ahead and restart Steam VR. Okay. Okay. Let's launch Steam VR. Okay. Good. It is showing up in the headset now. It's loading. And I see a blue screen. Oh, there we go but it's all off kilter. So I'm having some serious rendering problems. Now, this could just be that Yeah, it could just be that um I am currently streaming, which is putting stress on the video card. Because uh, it keeps backing out to the cliff house and or crashing Steam VR, so that's not a great experience. But I have seen weirder when trying to stream. So unfortunately, I think that's about as far as I can take this right now. Um. Yeah, so um, if anybody has any questions for me, uh, please uh, go ahead and post in the chat. I know there's only a couple of people here right now. I'm hoping that uh, more people might check out this video a little bit later. Um, all of the uh, fun technical issues aside, there's always something when I go live. Um, if you're uh, at all interested, um, I will have uh, links to uh, the... Um, uh, donation link uh, in this video's description uh, a couple of minutes after uh, it goes uh, into rendering. I'll go ahead and edit the video and add that link in. Uh, otherwise, you can certainly find that at cpgeek.org um, along with uh, the Discord, along with uh, my Twitter and uh, Facebook uh, group for cpgeek.org uh, and all of that stuff. Um, feel free to follow me on any of those social networks. Um, go ahead and like, get subscribed. Um, my video content is usually not this long form. Uh, when I do streams on YouTube, it does often uh, degrade into uh, this type of content, but I don't do these very often. Uh, usually when I uh, get something that's uh, uh, really new and really exciting and I have to rip into it, um, typically my unboxings are, are pretty short and to the point. Um, I just wanted to walk through the entire process of unboxing this, getting it hooked up, 
uh, and um, getting things started um, so people know exactly what they're in for. Uh, I didn't think that uh, there would be additional updates required to Windows Mixed Reality Portal. That was something that I didn't know. Um, I didn't realize that the headset would be so light. Again, something I didn't know. Um, just looking around uh, in VR on this headset, I haven't done any measurements whatsoever, but my general impression is that um, it's got a similar FOV to the Rift CV1, um, which is pretty decent. Um, I'm not sad about it. The index is a little bit wider. I would like a wider FOV overall. Uh, that's something to look into. But the biggest issue with wide FOV headsets uh, is basically that um, you reduce resolution over the wider FOV. So for example, the um, Pimax 8KX, which has a resolution of uh, 4K per eye or, um, wow, it's late, uh, 3840 by 2160, I believe it is. Yes, that sounds right. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, 3840 by 2160 uh, per eye. So uh, that means that uh, it has to stretch that over a much wider horizontal FOV um, versus something like this, which is 2160 by 2160 per eye uh, and has a pretty narrow overall comparative FOV to the IMAX 8KX. Uh, I believe that they advertise that as something like 200 degrees uh, FOV, and that's measured diagonally, um, whereas uh, the FOV on something like the HP Reverb G2 or the, um, the um, Oculus CV1, uh, as I was stating, is uh, gonna be probably in the, right around 100 or so, maybe a little tiny bit wider, 110-ish degree FOV. Um, so yeah, um, that's, uh, basically, uh, the, the general, uh, run of that. Um, but, uh, there's basically a lower amount of resolution for wider FOV. Um, so for example, it's, it's like the difference between, uh, the nice tight pixel density of a 48 inch 4k TV versus a 120 inch 4k TV. Um, looking at it from the same viewing distance of, say, a foot away, for example, um, you might just start making out pixels uh, a foot away from a 48-inch TV uh, that's 4K versus uh, a much larger 4K TV, like a 100-inch. Uh, you'll start, you'll definitely notice the blocky pixels a foot away from 100-inch TV. Um, it's just a whole lot less resolution per wider field of view. Um, so that is why larger FOVs are not so great right this second. But I have heard that um, someone is coming out with newer displays that are extremely high definition. Um, that will be great for VR. They're a type of OLED display that has an insanely high resolution. Um, so I'll be looking for that within the next couple of years of VR and um, AR headsets um, going forward. Uh, definitely interested in that technology and headsets like this or, or even something um, a little bit smaller, lighter, thinner. Um, they can certainly uh, slim it down, make things a little bit more comfortable. And I am liking where the, uh, the index in um, HP Rift uh, G2, or a Rift, <laughs> HP Reverb G2 um, is doing for the audio solution. The speakers are, are pretty good overall. Um, then again, I haven't had any problems with the audio solutions and the headsets that I've tried, period. Um, the CV1 has an excellent built-in audio solution that I'm very happy with. Um, the Index has an awesome audio solution that's, again, very similar to the uh, the Reverb G2. From what little I heard of the Reverb G2 audio, um, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, I'll definitely have a review, an actual review, not just first impressions, 
of the Reverb G2 within a couple of months. Um, I'll definitely be talking about it a little bit more. I'm going to be uh, hopefully live streaming a little bit more, uh, particularly over the holidays. I have a little bit of time uh, off coming, so uh, you may see some additional video content from me coming soon. Um, I'm going to try to keep smaller content. Um, again, these two, three hour streams uh, are not my my usual fare, um, and uh, I, I will definitely uh, be doing some some shorter form, quick, concise reviews. Um, I do like the streams as well. Um, typically, I do streams for gaming. Um, I do stream over on Twitch, uh, Twitch dot tv slash cpgeek2 the number two um, you can find a link to that at cpgeek.org as well if you're interested at all in, in me playing games um, that's where i would do uh, live vr broadcasts for vr games um, i've done a little like space pirate trainer and, uh, and those types of things over there some beat saber um, I have not gone all um, mixed reality with that. Um, I do have a, a green screen that I can put up, but I, I haven't done that for VR yet. Um, might be a good future project, um, but uh, no promises. Um, but I, I will be doing some, uh, some streaming as well as some uh, shorter form content. I already have some notes on some things that I like to put together. Um, my content is not just VR stuff. Um, I do enjoy VR. I do talk a lot about VR. Um, so if you're interested in that stuff, please do look for that here. Um, but uh, I am mostly a computer nerd overall. Uh, I like all kinds of video games. I stream a lot of pancake games uh, over on Twitch. That's usually what I go for, but sometimes I do spin up some VR over there. Uh, here on YouTube, I uh, typically uh, do uh, either highlights from Twitch um, or I also do a lot of uh, smaller review videos, uh, things like camera accessories, computer accessories, uh, things like, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the camera battery cheater I was talking about a little earlier in the beginning of my stream so long ago, um, I have uh, up on there. Uh, feel free, feel free to, uh, to thumb through some of the older videos. You might find some things that are interesting if uh, you're into computer stuff. Um, I have a, a video on uh, cell phones coming. I have uh, uh, some interesting content about the um, new uh, Ryzen processors. Uh, if I can get my hands on one, uh, I have one on back order right now, uh, but I might not get it until the new year. Um, the uh, 5950X is out of stock everywhere. Also, uh, GPUs, um, as I said previously, I'm currently rocking the um, NVIDIA uh, RTX 2080 Ti. I've been trying to get my hands on a 3080 or 3090, preferably the 3090. Um, I'm also interested in the uh, upcoming uh, big Navi cards from AMD, see how they'll compete. Uh, I'm personally more interested in the AMD, I'm uh, sorry, the um, uh, NVIDIA stuff, even though uh, AMD is much better priced for performance. Um, the only reason for that, I'm not an NVIDIA shill. Uh, I just do a lot of video editing, so their workstation type stuff, particularly their hardware video encoder uh, and their CUDA acceleration is way better than uh, what uh, AMD has on their cards currently, to the best of my knowledge. So fortunately, I'm going to be uh, spending a, a big stack of cash uh, for an NVIDIA card versus the uh, actual better performance of the, uh, the new AMD cards. So that'll be interesting coming up. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, so please do get subscribed. Check out my content at cpgeek.org. Um, and uh, thank you for tuning in um, all this time. Uh, I am very thankful for, uh, for anybody who, uh, who's still viewing so many hours later. Meanwhile, I'm going to have more sips of iced tea, see if I can get into a few VR games uh, just to give this thing a once over before the end of the night. Um, and uh, I will probably be talking about this a little bit more in the near future in the next couple of weeks. So uh, please do stay tuned. Have a great night, everybody. Again, I'm CP Geek, uh, and uh, this has uh, been another uh, cpgeek.org video.